Our Tio Delft campus is a beautiful space we share with many people. But because of the busy university life, we tend to forget about other creatures that would like to live here. Imagine the campus designed not only for students and professors. Imagine it would be home to all kinds of animals and plants. Imagine the campus would transform into a natural, biodiverse area where people and nature coexist, where the sand underneath the pavement turns into habitats, where plants purify our water system and provide food and shelter for organisms, where the campus is not only a place with circulation, but one where our nature can be fully experienced. Just imagine. In 1842, Teal Delft was first founded as a Royal Academy for Civil Engineering. Since then, the academy has vastly grown into an international polytechnic university with eight faculties and over 27,000 users. With 161 hectares, Teal Delft campus is one of the largest universities in the world. Normally, the campus is buzzing with life. However, right now, the campus is deserted. Like almost everywhere around the world, COVID-19 has forced people to work from home, leaving our public spaces vacant. This allows a new kind of user to claim the space. Nature is bouncing back. Humans have been changing nature into built environment for a long time and often excluding nature. COVID-19 is showing us that there is a range of species that can flourish in our engineered living environment. We can incorporate nature into the design of our living environment and this is an opportunity for our own Teal Delft campus as well. Since 1963, our campus has served as a circulation connector between different faculties. However, the campus area could provide for more than just humans. The unpaved area of the campus always takes the form of a neatly mowed lawn. But why do we mow? What is its benefit? Why don't we let things grow instead? It could be a feel of living things. And this is important. The landscape in which a campus is set in expresses the values important to the university. An evolving human nature relationship, moving from an egocentric towards an ecocentric world. In our campus, there is a huge potential to account for more species apart from just humans and this is why this project aims at designing the TU Delft Eco Campus, a holistic living environment designed for both humans and nature. This challenging time of the corona crisis has also influenced the execution of this course. As students and teachers from the course landscape on site have been working from our homes from all over the world, all with the same goal, which is to transform our Teal Delft campus into an eco-campus. We took this opportunity to redefine conventional education methods. We used films and VR as presenting mediums. We held online hands-on workshops and met with stakeholders and guest speakers. Amongst us students, we have a diverse nationality with landscape architecture and urbanism backgrounds. Our goal was to develop an overall eco-vision for the campus where both humans and biodiversity thrive. So what happened in the 11 weeks? During the first phase of this course, we researched on different plants and animal species that are found on our campus. We represented them in a journal. Through better understanding of the flora and fauna in the campus, this research influenced the eco-campus concept for each group. Forming six groups, each team envisioned an illustrated and ecological scenario for the campus. These six eco-visions were developed either from a non-human perspective or from a human one, all accounting for the living organisms in the campus. During this phase, we also grew plants and seeds from cuttings according to the guidelines provided by our tutors through online workshops. In this way, and through these hands-on planting sessions, we became a bit more familiar with working with plants. For the eco-concepts, each group focused on different analysis aspects, and there are six diverse proposals. Firstly, Tim Phoenix. With the art of letting grow, their strategies let go of humans' control over how nature should behave on campus and instead work with the natural growth processes through a new maintenance guideline. Secondly, Team Fresh Air came out with the concept of Nature First. This was about three biotope gradients from north to south, a forest, a meadow and a swamp. 
Team Eco Island also followed a similar approach, entitled Landscape in Landscape, and reaching the categories with land and water in the south of the campus. Following the water theme, Team Eco Lab came up with the Aquampus proposal, which imagined the campus as a water paradise like Venice. Team 4 Eco had a scenario of extreme microclimates. A circular and resilient eco-campus with microclimates and ecological gradients that serve as a stepping stone for species in the region. Lastly, Team New Horizons created a more coherent and diverse biosystem developed in both horizontal and vertical levels. They also considered humans as part of the system. Despite this challenging COVID-19 situation, where we could only have online analysis and discussions, we still managed to further develop all our concepts by designing components to elaborate how we can reimagine our campus. These components are of different scales and have different spatial qualities. After a presentation and discussion together with our tutors and also members from the Water Board and EcoCities, we had a voting process. The concept, the art of letting grow, was chosen as the basis of our design. Using components and ideas from all concepts that aligned, our TU Delft Eco Campus will be designed. The combined overall vision upholds the idea of giving space to natural processes through design methods and maintenance, letting go of paved areas, letting go the mindset of needing to control nature, allow wild plants and flowers to grow. The campus is structured in habitat zones with microclimates and gradients and also added water retention value to TU Delft. Our vision, the art of letting grow, is not a fixed result. It is a dynamic process. It is not just human-oriented. It is about living and growing with nature. The future campus is both an organized and let-go eco-campus providing biodiverse habitats accommodating multiple flora and fauna. To enrich this vision, we form new groups to design aspects and components supporting the overall concept of the art of letting grow. We also adapted ideas retrieved from the other five concepts. Letting grow does not mean that everything should be left to become a wild primitive kind of forest. It all comes down to working with the living and going with the flow instead of opposing it. We try to work from a bottom-up approach where we design with time and make with what is already there, what already exists. Spontaneous vegetation is often the most ecologically valuable because it exists mostly from local species that will be proper host for the local animals and insects. In order to validate our design, we presented our proposal and asked some experts and stakeholders about their thoughts. Their feedback and comments were very helpful and steered our design. As you, as you probably know, first goal uh, in our team is to create an eco-campus which will provide uh, equity for all the living or organisms. Uh, however, from your point of view, in which you are specialized on the environment, behavior, direction and sustainable development, do you believe that some of these future interventions are going to also make humans more sensitive on ecological issues, changing their daily habits on a lot of things beyond their presence in, uh, on the campus? I hope so, and I think so, because what always happens is that um, during the day you have a lot of impression, you perceive a lot, and that has an influence on how you behave here, or how you behave. What you see today at the campus, it's a kind of a desert-like design, uh, and it's very uh, in-between solution. So on one, from one side, it looks like a kind of... Uh, industrial area so there's places to park and a lot of buildings i think we should more firm and talk about the campus like most campuses by the way as a landscape with buildings in it and what also is in the design hopefully but i see that that if you introduce the smaller scale where you see the quality of all kind of ecological related interventions that you create a more walkability campus and also more a campus where people can dwell uh, a campus for seven days a week, and maybe also a campus for visitors, also inhabitants of Delft. 
And if you create that kind of atmosphere, people might take a stroll or sit down somewhere within the campus. Je staat bij, uh, op de campus van ja, de TU Delft ja, en je weet dus zijn bezig met, uh, met het hervormen van een ecocampus ja. om de campus toch meer, uh, meer biodivers te maken. Ja. Wat is er bij je eerste idee? Denk je, ben je er bang voor of ben je er optimistisch over? Nee, ik, uh, ik ben uh, hartstikke optimistisch over, want ik, uh, ik vind het een hele goede zaak. Hè. Dat, uh, ja, het is ook een verantwoording die we met z'n allen hebben. Uh, alleen ja, we hebben hier te maken met de TU Delft. Hè. En dingen gaan niet altijd even snel, dus ik, uh, ja, ik heb jullie plannen bekeken. Ik ben hartstikke enthousiast, ik vind, ik vind het echt hartstikke leuk verzonden. Ik vind het ook enorm creatief, alle complimenten. Ja. Dat ik ben wel bang dat ik, ja, dat moet je voorzichtig moet je dat brengen. Dus uh, vanuit jullie plannen is het ook voor dat we gewoon een paar kleine dingetjes oppakken. En dan moet je, moeten jullie goed communiceren, hè. Dus, dus binnen de TU gemeenschap. En dan proberen daar draagvlak voor te krijgen. Pas als het draagvlak er is, dan kan je eigenlijk verder gaan met, ja, met je plannen. Do you think these interventions could improve the campus users, both nature, species and humans, in the interaction, in the place, as well as educational matters? Yes, for sure. Because once one there is a long-term vision, that's for systemic change. Uh, let's change the water system, uh, change routes, change the way we maintain uh, the campus, um, which also head of maintenance is in favor of, of having more uh, flowers flowering and birds coming and bees and butterflies and other insects. And that's very important. So, uh, and what the students now are proposing and doing and building is actually adding to that and show with little interventions what is possible, uh, actually. And that comes in the mind of many other students and users of campus, people, but also uh, organisms, plants, insects, birds, you name it. Yeah. Are these interventions important for the future ecological consciousness of the Delft citizens? Yes, I think so, because so far TU Delft has also been a kind of technical university with technical things. Uh, and let's say the word ecology, you know, 10 years ago it was quite rare in this university. And I think now it's changing. We see that technology and nature should go hand in hand. I mean, it's uh, nature first, natural systemic principles where we should work with more and more. And uh, you show that in a very good way. So I'm very happy with what you've done. And uh, yeah, I hope we can, can, can continue this together. Do you believe that the Let It Grow concept would be able to work and coexist with the current student life? Students have shown us their vision of the campus, of the eco campus. It helps us understand and to see a different perspective. Um, to make it more practical, we're also interested in the link with climate, energy and circularity, among others. Um, but the student uh, work can be further elaborated in relation to those topics. So it is great inspiration. Thank you. We are starting to build part of the design in our designated areas. We will experiment with natural and reused building materials and also monitor and evaluate for spontaneous vegetation. The first interventions of the long-term design will be implemented by us, cooperating with TU Delft Head of Maintenance. This includes removing pavements and replacing them with vegetation, increasing the size of water bodies while softening their transition to land, and also blurring the boundary between people and nature. These are the first steps towards a campus that is no longer a constant, but instead, a dynamic, ever-changing living thing. The campus will never look the same as last year, and each year, it will increasingly promote the image of coexistence between people and nature.